Hey everybody, what's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel, Tammy Talks here. Let's talk Married at First Sight, Season 15, San Diego, Episode 13, The Ugly Truth. If you're brand new to my channel, I do breakdowns on various TV shows, both scripted and reality, interjecting my own thoughts, opinions, and theories into each and every recap. So, if you enjoy that type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel, thumbs up the video, thumbs up the video everybody, like the video, as soon as you come in, like the video if you enjoy it um and then happen to the comment section so we can talk respectfully about um everything that happened in this episode so first things first i want to thank eileen for the super thanks from last week super 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 appreciated um as always then a huge thank you to everybody that wished me a happy birthday so yesterday was my birthday old af now <laughs> um People being shocked about my age was hilarious, but um, a huge thank you to everybody that said happy birthday in the comments. Those of you that sent over the cash apps, um, I had some people buy me, like send me Starbucks. So thank you, thank you, thank you to every single one of you. Let's talk, all right? So let's start with Kristen and Mitch because they had the most mess going on on tonight's episode. So. All right, because I got a lot of notes for them, y'all. All right, so Kristen starts by meeting up with Mitch's sister-in-law, who we all know don't really see it for Mitch, all right? We can tell that by the way that um, the sister had a lot to say about him. Was it like the day after the wedding where they meet each other's families? That that sister-in-law, wouldn't she wasn't too keen on old Mitchie back then. So Kristen thinks that they are in the best spot that they've been in, um so far in the process but she does struggle with his um contrary contrarianism i know i'm saying that wrong contrarianism contrarianism i think it's because i spelled it i think it's contrarianism i know i spelled this wrong she struggles with that um so his sister-in-law said that a lot of it is really Mitch's delivery and his communication and she was saying how a lot of the things that her and Mitch have kind of gone a little back and forth about do um have come down to some of the things that you know he's like an extreme environmentalist and while that that's fine if that's the type of person that you want to be if that's the type of life that you want to live if those are your beliefs that is utterly and totally fine but you can't push that on to everybody else and you can't judge other people that don't live by that same um that don't live by those same philosophies that you do. Like the sister-in-law said, we ain't eating out of pouches. We're not doing that. We're not eating out of pouches. But I think she said that they do use like the reusable diapers or like the cloth diapers. So it's kind of give or take. But she does feel that Mitch, after some years now, has worked on his delivery. He's worked on his communication style. So because of that, they've gotten to a better place. Um... And she basically tells Kristen, you have to make it clear the things that you both want, that you both need to be happy in this relationship. Because if you aren't individually happy, you're not going to be happy together. And that's some real deal Holyfield. Because I think what a lot of people kind of miss is they come into these marriages and while they're not happy with themselves, they're not, you know um comfortable with themselves they don't have the highest self-esteem if you're not happy you can't single you can't be happy in a relationship and that's why so many of these marriages fail none of these people are ready to be married but nonetheless all right so we meet up with dr pepper dp has finally made an appearance Okay, so uh, they, Dr. Pepper wants them to have the opportunity where they're going to talk about whatever issues they have in the marriage, what challenges, what they need clarification on, what we want to change. Let's, let's, let's get the ball rolling. Let's have some healthy dialogue, right? Kristen was like, I got a bunch of stuff. Let's start with something, something light and airy, okay? So she says that she feels guilty whenever she gets an iced latte. I said, oh, girl. And I was like, I need to find out where this is going, where this is headed, because I had an iced latte earlier, a matcha latte, and I felt no ways about it. 
But Kristen said that um, she feels guilty because I guess she didn't have her reusable cup. I said, Lord, have mercy. Okay. So Mitch then said that um, he doesn't want her to feel bad about that. You know, he said, you know, her having her reusable cup. Yeah. It would make him a little prouder to have her by his side. I said, I know you fucking lying, Mitch. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I recycle with the best of them, okay? This can here, this is going to be rinsed out and tossed into the, the plastic bag that's over by the garbage can so that when I go downstairs in the morning and head to work, I can put, when I take out my garbage, I can put this into the recycling. I recycle my Amazon boxes. I recycle everything that can be recycled, right? But what I'm not going to do is go by somebody else's house or if someone comes into my house and I notice that you don't came in and you got a can in your hand and you rinse the can and throw it in the garbage, I'm not going to say reach up in that motherfucking garbage. Like, I'm not going to do that. And I think that's where Mitch has to, Mitch has to find a balance because I'm not a person, I'm not taking a cup into Starbucks. I have a Yeti cup. I take the Yeti cup back and forth to work with me. But if by chance I do forget my Yeti cup, I'm going to buy a bottle of water and I'm not going to feel bad about it. And I think that Mitch is the type of person that he almost doesn't have grace for people like that. He doesn't have the grace for people like that. And it's one thing to talk to somebody in a way where they're like, okay, now you know, you know, we can get you a Yeti cup. They're expensive. You can get a nice Yeti. Mine got like a little handle to it. You get a Yeti for about $40, $50. But think of the benefits of taking it back and forth as opposed to you spending, you know, $2, you know, every time you want to buy some water. There are ways to do things. And I think Mitch is so condescending that it takes away from whatever lesson he's trying to prove. Kristen then brings up the issue of her wanting to flip houses. Um, and Dr. Pepper was like, what's the problem? Because you can say that Dr. Pepper is over it because she, she knows that a lot of these issues are trivial and think that they should be able to, to figure out and solve and get to the bottom of themselves, but they're not able to because Mitch is a bitch. So, um, Mitch says that he just kind of feels that flipping houses makes houses, unattainable for the everyday middle-class person that might want to buy a house. So Kristen wants to go in, buy these dilapidated um, properties, revamp them, refurnish them, stage them. She made sure to say with reusable furniture, stage them, sell them, and then, you know, make a little profit off of it. Mitch feels that the average person, you know, maybe a family of four, um, that might be able to afford the dilapidated houses, house, but can't necessarily afford the cost of the house after it's been flipped. And like, well, I get what Mitch is saying. I absolutely 100% see what he's saying. But you have to think about that too. If someone is, if Kristen's buying a house for $25,000 because the house is a wreck, the house is, is, is shitty right now, right? So she's buying that house. What makes you think, what makes you think that, and she's putting this, say, $40,000 worth of renovations into it, what, could that average, the average family afford to do that? I think that's the point that Mitch is missing. So Dr. Pepper was like, let's not put all of the societal issues on the Kristen's back. And that's real. Like, why are you feeling like this one person, this one extra person that's part of the thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people probably at this point that are flipping houses, that's the hill you're willing to die on? You want to make her feel bad about it? Mitch is too self-righteous. He's too self-righteous. So he was like, well, there's a dark side to everything that you do. No matter what your job is, no matter what your career is, there is a dark side to your job, to your career, to every choice that you make. He said, I'm, I'm going to be the person to point that out. So if you can't deal with me being the person that's going to point that out, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I just tell Mitch, fuck you. 
Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Like, we all get that. There's a good and a bad to everything. But what nobody wants to do is go through life with somebody that's constantly over their shoulder judging all their issues. Because what if somebody did that to Mitch? What if somebody wanted to sit there and criticize him and point out the dark side of every single thing that he does? Right? You're an environmentalist. Is, is Mitch a vegan? So you care about the earth, but you're still eating animals. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, maybe it's just me. I'm not vegan or vegetarian, by the way. But, like, I just kind of feel like I can't, I can't do Mitch. And see, I gave Mitch a little bit of credit, and I said that he's growing, and he's seen the air in his ways. And look how you done disappointed me already, Mitch. It ain't been, what, a week and a half yet, and you've already disappointed me. So he asks if she can handle that and wonders if she can um, not only handle that there is a dark side, but handle, you know, somebody in her life constantly pointing that out. Kristen says she don't know. She don't know. You can't. The answer is you can't, Kristen, because you're getting so upset just at the, the, the notion that he is judging you for wanting to flip houses. You can't accept it. You can't deal with that. You won't be able to. And that's fine, girl. Go find somebody else. So Mitch said he wants to know. I'm sorry. Mitch said that his thinking is not going to go away. He said, but maybe he cannot say it so much. Maybe he can be a little more respectful with it. But, but whatever. However, y'all want to navigate this, but that's not going to work. Because nobody wants to, to deal with somebody that is constantly dogging them for their choices, for their questions, for their, their choices, for their, their thought process, for anything that they want to do. Nobody wants to deal with that. So Mitch says that he wants to know what decision day means to her and what will it take to get there. You know, initially Kristen was saying, I want to hear it. I love you by hearing this. I want to hear this. Kristen said, well, that was kind of, that was right after, you know, you told me that you weren't attracted to me. She said, but she can see the progress. She can see the growth. And now that things have changed, she is, um... She's willing to kind of let go of that and move on and like kind of move the goalpost a little bit. Um, she looks at decision day a little differently now, but she definitely wants him to be open to the possibility of falling in love with her. I feel like that standard, that's a good way to look at it. I mean, do you have any hope for us at all, my guy? That's basically, you know, what she's, what she's questioning, what she's asking, what she wants to know. So, later, they are eating lunch. And the way Mitch was slurping on that pasta or them noodles or whatever he was eating, couldn't have been me. Couldn't have been me. Because I had told him, why, why are you doing that? <laughs> I hate noisy eaters. I hate people that smack. I hate people that slurp. My dad is a slurper. So, like... We can be at dinner, and if my dad is, like, drinking coffee, no, we can not even at dinner. If we're, like, in the car till we stop and get Starbucks, my dad is definitely a, <sighs> he's one of those people. So, growing up hearing that, I cannot take it. I can't take it. I can't take it. So they're slurping and Kristen's trying to have this conversation with Mitch. And I'm like, damn, maybe he's just hungry. She says in her confessional, she's never noticed him eating like that before. She thinks he was just hungry. So she is going to kind of roll with it, rock inside, like let it go. So uh, Mitch is saying that once they start living together, things are going to get more intense. He's being very lax right now because this is just a process and, you know, this is a temporary home. But he said he doesn't use paper towel. He uses just like um, a, a towel, a hand towel probably. She said that's fine. Not a problem. It's going to be a problem if it comes to me doing all the laundry though. So... They have this, like, good situation, but then later, Mitch is in his confessional, and he is saying how one issue he didn't bring up is her, her wearing makeup. 
So Mitch is saying that he prefers a woman that is more natural. He doesn't like, you know, the curling of the, or what's she doing? The straightening of the hair. He doesn't like the makeup. And it's like, she doesn't have a lot of makeup on. That's what's killing me. Kristen's everyday look, she does not have a lot of makeup on. So, but he doesn't, he doesn't like the makeup, he doesn't like this, so he doesn't know how he can tell her, he said, without it coming across the way, and I feel like if you know that, keep it to yourself and be quiet, so Mitch FaceTimes Kristen's sister, and I knew, I knew this was going to go away, I could feel it, so uh, his sister, I'm sorry, her sister starts off and said, before we even go on any further, you had expectations, okay, about what you wanted in a woman, how you wanted your woman to look, all this other type of stuff. Have you moved past that? How have how we progressed since then? And Mitch said that in his mind, he was just kind of in fight or flight. He had this certain vision of the type of wife that he expected to get. He expected to get a very hippie wife, um, uh, a more surfy wife. He wanted, what was her name? Amelia from season 11 that was married to Bennett. Remember, she didn't want to take a shower every day. She didn't wash her ass every day. She didn't want to do all this extra stuff. She would have loved to have pouch, you know. Um, she would have loved to have like a little pouch of, of fruit snacks or whatever the hell he was eating. She probably wouldn't have minded that filthy tub. Because remember, she didn't want to clean up herself anyways. Amelia was nasty. These two would have been perfect. These two would have been perfect together. Kristen would have dealt with Bennett and his gowns that he wore at night. I think she would have been fine with that. So he asked his sister, he asked her sister, how can he tell Kristen that he likes her better when she doesn't wear makeup? He's more attracted to her when she's natural. And the way that her sister ate his ass up, she was like, well, let's, let's get one thing straight. Women do not wear makeup for the male gaze. Okay, we wear makeup because that's how we want to look. That's how we feel we look our best. That's how we feel attractive. That's how we feel like we want to look. So that is why women wear makeup. It's not for y'all. It's not for y'all. She would say on top of that. So that's first, first and foremost. Two, number two, the fact that you already told her that you weren't attractive to her. This is not the best thing to do. Or it's the same six weeks into the damn marriage. That's not how this should work at all. That is not how this should work. And Mitch is just sitting there. Okay. okay. And I'm thinking, my God, you're telling her sister. Do you think that she's not going to go back and tell her sister and run it back? Sure enough. Later on um, in the episode... We see um, all the couples are hanging out. And I kind of feel like y'all got to kind of expect now when y'all are all hanging out together that the experts are going to show up. So nobody should be surprised by that. Off rip, we see Morgan and um, Kristen talking. And Kristen tells Morgan, you know, he, told, he, he talked to my sister, said he doesn't like me with makeup on and he kind of wants me to change my hair, wants me to be more hippie. And Morgan, you know her, you know her, she's always on go. So, you know, Morgan ready to be like, okay, this is what you do. Run, run up on them, grab something from them, throw it on the ground. You know, Morgan's ready. She's on go. So, Kristen said that she's going to lay a couple nuggets out plant some seeds, but she's she's tired. She's tried, tired of changing herself to fit into what he wants her to be. So, the, cause the group is all sitting around, all the guys and girls all get back together, and they're going around in a circle kind of talking about um, when they met with the expert, who did you guys meet with, who did you guys meet with, and what they actually talked about. So, Mitch said they met with Dr. Peppers, and he said that Dr. Peppers... Um, just gets them as a couple, you know, we kind of went through and we talked about what things we needed to change and whatsoever. So Alexis says, well, I'm, it's great that you got past, you know, the not wanting her to wear makeup and all that type of stuff. So I'm glad that, you know, that didn't get in the way of you guys' relationship. And Mitch was like, oh shit. Oh shit. Cause I, he kind of knew, 
that Kristen's sister might have went back and said something, but maybe that phone call was like, maybe it just happened earlier, right? So he was like, I, I never said that. So I think it was Lindy was like, yeah, I heard you say that. I think Miguel was like, you did. Because Justin sure was like, I heard it. <laughs> Justin and Alexis are messy as fuck together. But Justin was like, I heard it too. So Mitch was like, I, I don't, I don't think I said that, you know, cause that would make me sound, you know, like I'm controlling. So Kristen was like, no, you did. So Mitch then says he didn't want it to see, he, he doesn't want to seem controlling. He didn't know that that had spread around about that, but you know, maybe I did mention something about makeup. So you got caught in the lie. You got caught in the lie, Mitch. You got caught in the lie, babe. And he didn't know how to deal with it. So Kristen said that, um, but I'm sorry, Mitch said that he doesn't know where he is right now in regards to decision day. Kristen said that, you know, yeah, we're both undecided. We're both undecided. Um, she said she came into this and for a while she was wondering, how can I change to be enough for, for, for Mitch? How can I be enough for him? And now she's wondering, do I even want him? Is he enough for me? She said, so, I don't know. I don't know if within the next two weeks, he has enough time to change and give me what I need. Can that be fixed in two weeks? I said, she about to go off, off, A-W-F, off. So, the couple, I mean, the experts come out. And Dr. Peppers said, did something happen? What is going on? Because last time I saw y'all, y'all were doing good. We worked through the issues. So what happened? Christian said that, um, well, I just want to know if Mitch is over the initial physical issues that he had with me. Dr. Pepper said, I thought everything was okay. We just had this meeting where we were able to air out all our grievances. So, you know, where was, where was this coming from? Mitch said, yeah, he, he asked her sister for her input on him being more attracted to her without like makeup. And Mitch lied because Mitch did not say that he wanted to know how he could tell her to basically stop wearing makeup, stop doing your hair. He wants you to look like you just rolled the fuck out of bed. He, he wasn't truthful about that. He wasn't and he know he wasn't because he knows that they didn't have enough time to watch the footage. So... Dr. Pepper was like, well, do you find her, are you very attracted to her? Because that's a compliment. Somebody likes you without makeup, which it is, but not in the way that Mitch is saying it. So Mitch was like, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm attracted to her. Dr. Pepper said, Lord, have mercy. I thought you would answer that a little more confidently. Mitch was like, well, I'm being put on the spot. I'm sorry. Somebody asking you if you're attracted to your wife is not being put on the spot, babe. <laughs> It's not being put on the spot. So Kristen said, well, no, you said that you wanted a more hippie girl and you want me to be more natural and dress down more and not do my hair as much and not put on the little bit of makeup that I'm putting on. So now Mitch is sitting there looking silly because this is the second time y'all done had kind of a big blow up argument in front of the other couples. So Kristen said that it is embarrassing. It's it which it is. Which it is. And it's a, it was a moment that he could have used to talk to her family, to get to know her more, to find out something about her. But you instead chose this moment to find out how can I, how can I change her to look the way that I want her to look so I'm more attracted to her. So Dr. Pepper is trying to, Talk about this, and Mitch was like, seems like y'all already had a conversation. Christian said, no, we didn't have a conversation. My sister called me on the way here. I just found out about this. So now Mitch is looking stupid because surely you did not think her sister wouldn't tell her. You didn't ask your sister. You asked hers. You asked her sister. Surely you had to have known that her sister was going to say something. So... Dr. Pepper was like, well, maybe this is something 
um, that we can kind, you guys can kind of talk out. Let's just talk through this because nobody was prepared for this cringy conversation that's happening. So Kristen says she is not going to accept that he's attracted to her enough. She's tired of hearing about, oh, he's had some growth with therapy. She's tired of Nate. I mean, I'm sorry, not Nate. She's tired of Mitch basically being pacified through this entire process. But a lot of the, some of that fault falls on you as well because you have been pacified find him and every time he comes back and says, I, I, I didn't know I, I'm trying you accept that and you coddle him as well Kristen so this all doesn't fall on Mitch about 80% of it does but 20% of it is also you basically coddling him every step of the way and that's why everybody else is coddling him in the way that they are when he shows the least amount of you know little the smallest amount of growth so she says she wants somebody that's excited that she walked into the room and that thinks that she's beautiful even with a little bit of makeup that she does have on because she honestly does not wear a lot. So Dr. Pepper said, I am so sorry. She said, no, I don't need an apology from you. I need one from him. So instead of Mitch just saying, I'm sorry, Mitch was like, I, 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 I feel blindsided right now. And Kristen loses it. It was like, is, is this blindsided to anybody else? Does this feel like it's coming out of nowhere? So then Mitch says in his confessional that he hasn't been trying to change her whatsoever. So this entire, you know, situation is regrettable. You have been trying to change her. You, you wouldn't let her get the party favors that she wanted. You're not letting her drink out of a fucking plastic water bottle. You're making her put trail mix in a pouch. You're making her use this big water filtration system. You're doing everything you can to change her. And it's kind of, it shows a lack of self-awareness that you can't see that. Kristen, say no on decision day. <laughs> say no, because you will never be happy with him. Because you're going to bend and bend and bend and bend to do everything that appeases him, you're going to completely lose yourself and you're going to end up resenting him. It's not going to work. Let me know what you guys thought about tonight's episode. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up the video. Hop in the comment section, y'all. I will catch y'all there. Peace.